Right, hello there, welcome to Vanguard Life and of course uh, we are going to be hooking you up live to the presidential broadcast which is coming up any moment from now and of course uh, the president is expected to announce an extension of uh, lockdown and of course uh, maybe other states would be included in this uh, special broadcast uh, coming up just after two weeks we had the first uh, uh, broadcast uh, of course after that we also hope that um, there's going to be announcement on more uh, palliatives you know for Nigerians in this uh, new broadcast okay just stay tuned we are going to um, link you up to a live stream you know uh, where you would get to hear uh, Mr. President talk
from all identified contacts while doubling the number of testing laboratories in the country and raising our testing capacity to 1,500 tests per day. We also train over 7,000 healthcare workers on infection prevention and control while deploying NCDC teams to 19 states of the Federation. Lucas and Abuja today have the capacity to admit some 1,000 patients each across several treatment centers. Many state governments have also made provisions for isolation wards and treatment centers. We will also build similar centers near our airports and land borders. Youth are resources and those provided through donations who will adequately equip and man these centers in the coming weeks. Already, healthcare workers across all the treatment centers have been provided with the personal protective equipment that they need to safely carry out the care they provide. Our hope and prayers are that we do not have to use all these centers, but we will be ready for all eventualities. At this point, I must recognize the incredible work being done by our healthcare workers and volunteers across the country, especially in frontline areas of Lagos and urban states, as well as the federal capital territory. You are our heroes. And as a nation, we will forever remain grateful for your sacrifice during this very difficult time. More measures to motivate our healthcare workers are being introduced, which we will announce in the coming weeks. As a nation, we are on the right track to win the fight against COVID-19. However, I remain concerned about the increase in number of confirmed cases and deaths being reported across the world and in Nigeria especially. On March 2020, when we started our lockdown in conforming with medical and scientific advice, the total number of confirmed cases across the world was over 700 and 80,000. Yesterday, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally was over 1,850,000. This figure is more than double in two weeks. In the last 14 days alone, over 70,000 people have died due to this disease. In the same period, we have seen the health system of even the most developed nations being overwhelmed by this virus. Here in Nigeria, we had 131 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in 12 states on 30th March 2020. This morning, Nigeria had 323 confirmed cases in 20 states. Unfortunately, we now have 10 fatalities. Lagos State remains the center and accounts for 54% of the confirmed cases in Nigeria. When combined with FCT, the two locations represent over 71% of the confirmed cases in Nigeria. Most of our efforts will continue to focus in these two locations. Majority of the confirmed cases in Lagos and the FCT are individuals with recent international travel history or those that came in contact with returnees from international trips. By closing our airport and land borders and putting strict conditions for seaport activities, we have reduced the impact 
of external factors on our country. However, the increase in the number of states with positive cases is alarming. The National Center for Disease Control has informed me that a large proportion of new infections are now occurring in our communities through person-to-person -person contact. So we must pay attention to the danger of close contact between person-to-person. -person. At this point, I will remind all Nigerians to continue to take responsibility for the recommended measures to prevent transmission, including maintaining physical distancing, good personal hygiene, and staying at home. In addition, I have signed the quarantine order in this regard and additional regulations to provide clarity in respect of the control measures for the COVID-19 pandemic, which will be released soon. The prevailing response to COVID-19 is built on our ability to detect, test, and admit cases, as well as trace all their contacts. While I note some appreciable progress, we can achieve a lot more. Today, the cessation of movement, physical distancing measures, and the prohibition of mass gatherings remain the most efficient and effective way of reducing the transmission of the virus. By sustaining these measures, combined with extensive testing and contact tracing, we can take control and limit the spread of the disease. Our approach to the virus remains in two steps. First, to protect the lives of our fellow Nigerians and residents living here, and second, to preserve the livelihoods of workers and business owners. With this in mind, and having carefully considered the briefings and the report from the Presidential Task Force and the various options offered, it has become necessary to extend the current restriction of movement in Lagos and other states as well as the FCT for another 14 days effective from 11.59 p.m. on Monday, 13th of April, 2020. I am therefore once again asking you all to work with government in this fight. This is not a joke. The matter of life and death. Mosques in Mecca and Medina had been closed. The Pope celebrated Mass on an empty St. Peter's Square. And the famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris held Easter Mass with less than 10 people. India, Italy, and France are in complete lockdown. Other countries are in the process of following suit. We cannot relax. The previously issued guidelines on exemptive services shall remain. This is a difficult decision to take, but I am convinced that this is the right decision. The evidence is clear. The repercussions of any premium and to the lockdown action is unimaginable. We must not lose the gains achieved thus far. We must not allow a rapid increase in community transmission. We must endure a little longer. I would therefore take this opportunity to urge you all to notify the relevant authorities if you or your loved ones develop any symptoms. I will also ask our healthcare professionals to redouble their efforts to identify all suspected cases, bring them into care, and prevent transmission to others. No country can afford 
the full impact of a sustained restriction of movement of the economy. I am fully aware of the great difficulties experienced, especially by those who earn a daily wage, such as traders, day workers, artisans, and manual workers, who their sustenance depends on their ability to go out. Their livelihoods depend on them mingling with others and about seeking work. But despite these realities, we must not change the restrictions. In the last two weeks, we announced related measures such as food distribution, cash transfers, and loans repayment waivers to ease the pains of our restrictive policies during this difficult time. These relatives will be sustained. I have also directed that the current social register be expanded from 2.6 million households to 3.6 million households in the next two weeks. This means we will support an additional 1 million homes with our social investment programs. A technical committee is working on this and will submit a report to me by the end of this week. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry and I command them. I urge them to continue to maintain utmost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. Fellow Nigerians, follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The response of our state governors has been particularly impressive, especially in aligning their policies and actions to those of the federal government. In the coming weeks, I want to assure you that the federal government, through the presidential task force, will do whatever it takes to support you in this very difficult period. I have no doubt that by working together and carefully following the rules, we shall get over this pandemic. I must also thank the legislative arm of government for all their support and donations in this very difficult period. This collaboration is critical to the short and long-term success of all the measures that we have instituted in response to the pandemic. As a result of this pandemic, the world as we know it has changed. The way we interact with each other, conduct our businesses and trade, travel, educate our children, and earn our livelihood will be different. To ensure our economy adapts to this new reality, I am directing the ministers of industry, trade and investment, communication and digital economy, science and technology, transportation, aviation, interior, health, works and housing, labor and employment, and education to jointly develop a comprehensive policy for a Nigerian economy functioning with COVID-19. The ministers will be supported by the Presidential Economic Advisory Council and the Economic System Unity Committee in executing this mandate. I am also directing the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, the National Security Advisor, the Vice Chairman, National Food Security Council, and the Chairman 
Presidential Fertilizer Initiative to work with the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 to ensure the impact of this pandemic on our 2020 farming season is minimized. Finally, I want to thank the members of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 for all their hard work so far. Indeed, the patriotism shown in your work is exemplary and highly commendable. Hello, Nigerians. I have no doubt that by working together and carefully following the rules, we shall get over this pandemic and emerge stronger in the end. I thank you all for listening, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There, that was uh, the presidential broadcast, okay, uh, by President Mohamedou Buhari GCFR. Okay, the president has actually talked about a number of things, um, including the fact that um, he has announced an extension to the um, correct lockdown in Lagos, Ogun State, and Abuja, okay, for another two weeks. Okay, the president. Um, also announced um, palliatives. He said he's going to sustain the current um, palliative and in fact even um, increase it to about a million, you know, homes in Nigeria to cushion the effects of uh, the lockdown. The president also said that he is uh, concerned about the increase in number of deaths and, you know, cases by the day. But I think that um, what informed the decision of the president, you know, to extend, you know, the lockdown for another uh, two weeks, okay? He said that there are measures to, um, you know, um, curbing the COVID-19 in Nigeria, which includes that Nigerians should continue to stay at home, you know, keep their um, hygiene level optimal, and then, of course, uh, um, he has uh, actually signed the quarantine order, you know, um, to ensure that um, the COVID-19 is, um, you know, uh, caught in Nigeria. Okay, that's all we can um, take here on Vanguard Life. Uh, we hope to bring you more news as the break. But do not forget to share this video and like it. And of course, visit our website www.vanguardngr.com to get full details of uh, the presidential uh, broadcast. Okay, and also do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Vanguard TV where you can see uh, a full video of all of this.